At the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on the earth and under the earth. For the Lord became obedient to death, death on a cross. Therefore, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Today is Holy Wednesday. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins <clears throat> and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who willed your Son to submit for our sake to the yoke of the cross, so that you might drive from us the power of the enemy, grant us your servants to attain the grace of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall be put, not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let him confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. The Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake, I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers a stranger to my mother's sons, because zeal for your house consumes me and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Insult has broken my heart and I am weak. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For consolers, not one could I find. Rather, they put gall in my food and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. See you, lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not.
Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Hail to you, our King, obedient to the Father. You were led to your crucifixion like a gentle lamb to the slaughter. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, what are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Today is the last full day of Lent. Lent ends tomorrow at the beginning of the Mass that we celebrate in the evening of the Lord's Supper. It's also called Spy Wednesday as well because, well, it's the day that's been traditionally attributed to when Judas sort of starts doing his thing, unfortunately, or fortunately for us, I suppose. Indeed, this great season of preparation, as it concludes tomorrow evening, and then we begin an even more intense and very beautiful celebration the sacred three days, the, the triduum as it's called. And all along the way, through these 40 days of Lent and these three wonderful days that are about to come upon us, the whole point of it, remember when we're on a journey, there always has to be a goal, there always has to be a destination. and. Again, the liturgy is so beautiful and many of the prayers and certainly the readings that we use in these sacred days are very ancient in their usage. And so over these 2,000 years, words are very carefully chosen. And the prayer over the gifts that I'll be offering in a few moments, we ask that we who celebrate the passion of God's only Son may experience the grace of its effects. And there's our goal right there, our destination. 
these 40 days, and really these 40 days of Lent are just a small microcosm of our, our whole faith journey in this world and life, all 365 days of, ye of the year and each year that goes by, that we may experience the grace of its effects, the effects of our Lord's suffering, his death, and his resurrection. Again, for the third day now, we've been hearing from Isaiah, the prophet, from that beautiful section that's called the Suffering Servant Passage. And Isaiah's words ring out. They sing out to us as we prepare to experience ourselves, as we walk in the very footsteps of our Lord, the passion. We enter into that passion ourselves as well with full confidence that it does not end in defeat, but it will conclude with the victory of Easter morning. We must have that confidence always. The preface that we'll hear in a few moments as well, that begins the great Eucharistic prayer just prior to the Holy, 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 explains again that in the passion and the resurrection of our Lord, the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. So let's see to it then as we conclude these final sacred days and then enter upon to the week of weeks, the 50 days of Easter, that our voices will join with those cherubim and seraphim and the choirs of angels, praising and always thanking God for the wonder of these gifts even though we don't deserve them, these gifts that God has bestowed upon us. God knows us and knows what we need to be whole. With this knowledge, we now offer our prayers. For the church, may she be ever vigilant in her pursuit of teaching God's truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the leaders of all nations, may they lead their people with justice and in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who are blinded by their own agendas, who refuse to see God's way, May the work of the Holy Spirit help remove the scales from their eyes so that they may clearly see the truth. Let us pray to the Lord. For this Eucharistic community, may we heed Christ's teachings on prayer and be active in helping the poor. Let us pray. We pray for the intention of this Mass this morning for Jesse Werner, let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for all those who have died, especially today we remember the priest of our diocese who died on this day, Father J. Gideon Mazanik, way back in 1873, Father Henry Jacobs, 1881, Father Leo A. Ricklin, 1915, Father Maximilian Oswald, 1928, and Father Frederick Theralt, 1951. And let us also pray for Bishop Ricken's brother who passed away two days ago, Mark Ricken, and pray for the whole family as they mourn the loss of their loved one. May all of them, having sought after God in this earthly life, now be part of God's heavenly kingdom let us pray to the Lord. God of love, hear our prayers. 
that one day we might live with you forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings made here, and graciously grant that celebrating your Son's passion in mystery, we may experience the grace of its effects through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion Anaphon. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve 
and to give his life as ransom for many. You may re be receiving more than one host since we have to use up as much of the Eucharist as possible since the tabernacle will be empty tomorrow. Let us pray. Endow us, almighty God, with the firm conviction that through your Son's death and time, to which the revered mysteries bear witness, we may be assured of perpetual life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, remember, there is no Mass tomorrow morning. The Mass of the Lord's Supper is tomorrow evening here. 
You're also invited to come to our stone soup supper beforehand. That begins at 5.30 downstairs. Good Friday morning and Holy Saturday morning, we will celebrate the Office of Readings and Morning Prayer here, um, but there is no Masses, obviously, on those mornings. And, of course, Holy, Th or Holy Good Friday afternoon at 1 o'clock at the St. Peter's site is our, is our celebration of the Lord's Passion. And, of course, the Easter Vigil, beginning with the lighting of the Easter fire, begins at 8.15 on Saturday, and that's at this site as well. So check the bulletin for all those times and other events that are going on. The Lord be with you. With Bow down for the blessing. Grant your faithful, O Lord, we pray, to partake unceasingly of the Paschal mysteries and to await with longing the gifts to come, that persevering in the sacraments of their rebirth, they may be led by Lenten works to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.